So neuroendocrine tumors is unique in various sense, not just that it is uh, rare, not that that it is one of those cancers, very few cancers where we have seen a rapid increase in incidence, but also in terms of how we classify neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, one way to classify neuroendocrine tumors is based on the tumor's capacity to secrete certain hormones or vasoactive uh, peptides. Today we would focus on uh, neuroendocrine tumor functional syndromes. Uh, and one of the commonest functional syndrome we see in a neuroendocrine tumor is carcinoid syndrome. When intestinal carcinoid tumors metastasize to liver, it's common that people develop a condition known as carcinoid syndrome. The same syndrome can develop sometimes from lung carcinoids, ovary carcinoids, and other kinds of carcinoids, but the most common is intestinal carcinoids that have spread to liver. Carcinoid syndrome is a collection of symptoms that uh, include such things as flushing, watery diarrhea, scarring in the heart, scarring in the abdominal cavity and other parts of the body, sometimes wheezing, sometimes rapid heartbeat, sometimes anxiety or mental uh, changes. It can really do a lot of things that can be very disruptive to life. So in patients who have carcinoid syndrome, they can really have significant symptoms from the carcinoid. People can have diarrhea that is really disabling, where they end up going to the bathroom so many times, they get dehydrated, they end up in the emergency room. Um, the flushing and the heart palpitations can also be disabling and can really affect your quality of life. And if you don't control carcinoid syndrome, you can have permanent damage to your heart. And so you really need to make sure if somebody is having symptoms of carcinoid syndrome that you diagnose it in an expedited manner and that you start treatment as soon as you can. The challenge is a lot of time with carcinoid syndrome, you can actually present in a way that might look like an asthma exacerbation or it might look like a heart attack or it might look like a gastroenteritis or a viral bug that's causing your GI tract to not be functioning well. I've had patients who came in with bleeding from the rectum, so blood in their stool, and it was thought that they might have colon cancer. Or some people brush it off and say, I just have hemorrhoids. So the biggest challenge with carcinoid syndrome is that it can present with symptoms that really can be attributed to a lot of other diseases. Carcinoid syndrome can have a significant impact on someone's quality of life. This quality of life can not only be in their personal sphere, but also in their professional sphere. It's not uncommon for patients to flush, and if they're attempting to work, let's say in an office setting, their coworkers are constantly looking at them, wondering, what's wrong with you? Because it looks like they're either embarrassed or mad, and it can certainly cause uh, hardships and cause the patient with carcinoid to feel a bit isolated. Carcinoid syndrome is basically a clinical manifestation of excessive serotonin in the body. Where is the serotonin coming from is the tumor. The tumor usually produces it. it could be both the primary tumor, but in most cases, it is uh, being produced by a metastatic tumor, especially in liver because once the tumor metastasizes to liver, um, that excessive serotonin production it, it often doesn't break down or get metabolized and then gets released to the systemic circulation and gives uh, us these syndromic symptoms. From our preclinical studies, we also know that excessive serotonin production also acts as a growth factor for the tumor growth. Uh, so elevated serotonin is not good in terms of uh, controlling disease. So we often employ strategies to lower the serotonin, not just to make patients feel better from syndrome standpoint, but also help slow down the tumor growth. The test that I commonly measure to follow carcinoma syndrome would be biochemical markers such as serotonin in their blood, 5-hydroxyindoleacetic uh, acid, either the, the blood uh, level or a 24-hour urine, uh, and chromogranin A. So those three bio, bio, biochemical markers form the, the basis for us to monitor over time and correlate with symptoms as well as scans. Uh, carcinoid syndrome can be 
treated so effectively today by removing the bulk of tumor in the body that's manufacturing these hormones, whether it's by surgery or embolization or ablation, different techniques we have, and in addition by using medications that are called somatostatin analogs, like octreotide and lanreotide, and also by a new medication that prevents serotonin production known as telotrostat. And with these types of medications and procedures, most people with carcinoid syndrome can once again have high quality life. One way is to block or slow down the release of serotonin, either with somatostatin analog or blocking the enzyme which produced the serotonin with the help of Zermelo. The second strategy we often employ uh, to, to decrease the serotonin production and control carcinoid syndrome is by uh, cytoreducing or decreasing the bulk of the cancer. That's the root cause of the cancer, right? And there are various uh, ways we can achieve that based on the location of the disease, the bulk of the disease. The advice that I give my patients who experience carcinoid syndrome is try to avoid or minimize the provocative stimuli. If the symptoms are there and not responsive to either rescue octreotide, not responsive to oral telotrostat, then we want to work together to determine what can be done to better control their symptoms. This is where we address the causes with each individual patient because we know that our patients are going to do better if their syndromes are controlled. So if there are certain foods that provoke it, we want patients to avoid those provocative stimuli. And with our current treatments, we can control a lot of that and give patients a uh, a, uh, a broader opportunity to enjoy those things in life that they're used to. A healthy diet is extremely important in any patient. Um, when we talk about carcinoids specifically, it's really important that patients try to incorporate things like lean meats into their diets. Things like hard cheeses and things with a lot of tyramine can actually cause the flushing. Um, there's some nuts like walnuts that also can cause some of those symptoms. Um, so just really be careful in what you're eating. The way we have advanced the science and, and improved the treatment options. Our patients are living a lot longer. We are aiming to prove survival by many years, if not decades. And with new treatment options coming down the horizon, I am very optimistic. Um, and that's perhaps one of the reasons which led me to gravitate towards neuroendocrine tumors, because I am seeing a lot more enthusiasm uh, in terms of drug new drug development not just from the industry sponsors but also from our uh, federal agencies uh, NIH and NCI so the future is very bright I'm very happy that we are in an era that I get to practice neuroendocrine oncology in an era where I have a lot of resources in my hands and uh, and the newer agents are um, are in the development and some of the trials are in phase three settings, you know, many trials phase two settings. So um, the, the future looks very bright for our neuroendocrine tumor patients. Mm -hmm.